Hello and welcome to day 16 of our look through the book of Proverbs and obviously we're on chapter 16 today. Uh, before we take a moment and jump into this really great chapter, let's pray and ask God to reveal himself to us through this, uh, through his word today. Father, um, we thank you for your guidance and for your wisdom. Father, I thank you that you are a God of wisdom, and uh, I pray today as we dive into this chapter that you would reveal yourself to us. Um, you would show us what we need to learn and where we need to grow and how we need to become more like your son, Jesus. Father, may we walk in wisdom as we study this um, this great chapter and learn more about what it means to be um, completely committed to you in all of our ways. Father, I pray this in your holy and precious son's name. Amen. Amen. Um, today, what I want to do is I want to walk through a few verses that stood out to me in this chapter. And I'm, some of them I'm going to kind of lump together and read kind of like a couple at a time. And so the first kind of set of scriptures I want to look at today is verses 1, 9, and 33. Uh, again, I'm going to be reading from the ESV version. So let's read these three together. The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answers of the tongue is from the Lord. That's verse 1. Verse 9, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. And finally, in verse 33, the lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. Um, I could have probably lumped a couple more verses into this, these three that kind of have the same thing, theme. But in these verses, we see the same truth over and over again. We can plan, but in the end, it's the Lord who's in control. And um. I have uh, footnotes at the bottom of my Bible. I'm using like an ESV study Bible. And it says in this section that it compares the plans of man's heart and the sovereign direction of the Lord. I can plan all I want, but ultimately in the end, the Lord is sovereign. And the Lord's the one who directs my, plan, my, plan, my path. The Lord is the one with the answer. He's the one who kind of establishes my steps and my decisions. In the end, everything comes from him. You know, I'm a, I'm a planner. I like to be in control or at least to think I'm in control. And these are verses that I personally struggle with because, you know, he is sovereign. He is in control. He has established his path before me. And I have to kind of get to this point where there's freedom in that, that I don't have to have everything figured out because God already has. Now let's, if you look at verse three, I know we didn't kind of include it in this section, but you can kind of include verse three in this too. It says, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. So really my job is to commit my ways to the Lord and my plans will be established because my plans will reflect his plans when I commit to him. And I think that's really the ultimate truth in that, that we have to pull out is that as I commit my ways to him, as I live my life for him, as I try to grow closer to him, my plans, my purposes, everything, you know, that I want to be in control of, it starts to change and it starts to reflect more and more of God as I grow closer to him. And uh, as I commit my ways to him, my plans will be established because they ultimately end reflect him and who he is. Uh, the next section of verses that I kind of want to put together are 13, 22, and 24. So let's read those together. 13 says this, Righteous lips are the delight of a king, and he loves him who speaks what is right. That's verse 13. Verse 22, Good sense is a fountain of life to him who has it, but the instruction of fools is folly. And verse 24, Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. Um, you know, these verses have a lot to do with my words and the things I say. The, Lord's, the Lord wants me to speak righteousness. So how do I speak righteousness? It's, it's knowing God's word. I think we say that a lot, right? Like know God's word. It really does connect to every area of our life. But what really stood out to me is the second half of verse 13. He loves him who speaks what is right. I think that is a powerful verse to live by in the current climate of our culture. You know, we have brothers and sisters in Christ who are hurting. There are people who don't know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and they're hurting. And it's our job to speak what is right. You know, we may have various views and opinions on different subjects happening right now, but everything should bottom line to this. Our job is to speak what is right. Our words should always point back to God's truth. I want to say that again. Our words should always point back to God's truth. You know, when I read like verses like these, like these three, I am always reminded um, to kind of put a 2020 spin on it. It's not just the words that come out of my mouth that God wants me to have that to be right. I think um, 
I think this is where the good sense in verse 22 comes into play because it's beyond just my words. My words also include my social media life. It's the things I text, the pictures I put on Instagram. It's the stuff I put, share on Facebook. All of those things make up my words and I have to kind of ask myself, am I speaking what is right? Are my words righteous? Am I using good sense? Because the world is looking at that aspect of my life as well. And so, um, you know, these are three verses that convict me a lot in the things that I say and the things that I do and how people perceive me. Because I want, at the end, I want them all to reflect Christ and I want them to be his right, not mine. I, uh, I feel like we can't get out of this chapter without looking at verse 31 um, because of Pastor Mike mostly, but gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained in a righteous life. You know, every time Mike sees a picture of himself, he automatically comments on the color of his hair, what it used to be, what it is now. You know, but we see in this verse that uh, Mike has a crown of glory, doesn't he? You know, my husband's gray hair aside for a moment. I think we see the value of a life lived for God in this verse, a life that lives out the um, kind of the first set of verses we read, you know, verses one and nine and 33. By committing my life to God, I'm living a life of righteousness. And as I grow older and I grow more into who God wants me to be, my age is really a crown of glory. It's a life lived for God. Um, I don't know about you, but this chapter really spoke to me and it convicted me in a few areas. And I hope as you go through it, um, there are some verses that convict you as well and challenge you and some things that you just maybe want to kind of think through and mull over and allow the Holy Spirit to teach you about. So uh, I hope you have a great day. I hope this, like I said, I hope this chapter speaks to you. Have a great day.